Well, good afternoon, everybody. Pastor Bob here with you with uh, another message from the book of Romans today. Today we'll be in Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 13. I uh, just wanted to say hello again. and Hey, we finally got some nice weather. A little windy today. But uh, before we get started, if you want to get your Bibles, I want to tell you about a couple things that's going on over at the church. We're going to be trying to show uh, movie night again this Saturday at six o'clock uh, we've been trying to get in war room for the last I don't know how long every time we get ready to schedule this movie we have bad weather so we're praying and hoping that this Saturday we will have a break last Saturday we had a little bit of ice on the road and I decided hey let's go ahead and cancel so this Saturday at six o'clock uh, open to the public uh, we'll be having hot dogs and nachos and and uh, cheese and drinks and we're just going to have a good time so come on over at six o'clock we'd love to have you that's at beaver run church of the brethren down in the basement on sunday evening we will be uh showing the second uh, series in the chosen uh, we had a really good turnout last sunday i thought a really good discussion afterwards uh, in our attempt to uh, gain a better relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, something I learned just from the first week, last uh, last week, uh, when we showed it. Uh, number one, those of you who came noticed that the screen was kind of dark. Uh, that is on me, and I figured out a way to get the projector to lighten up. So this week shouldn't be as dark. I figured out a way to lighten it up a little bit, and that'll be upstairs Sunday night. You know, anytime that we do something that brings us into a closer relationship with Jesus Christ, it does a couple of things. Number one, it makes the spirits uh, stand up and take notice. You know, Satan does not want us having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Satan loves religion, and he is a very religious, spiritual being himself. And so we can go to church all we want to and try to be good and say uh, we're spiritual and that may be true but what satan really hates is when we get together and say you know we want to do something to learn more about jesus to fall in love with him and to gain a relationship with him and that's what this series the chosen is supposed to do it's not supposed to answer your questions verse by verse in the bible it was never intended for that it was intended to make us ask questions and to uh, bring us closer into relationship with him. I got thinking the other day of these people that walked the earth with Jesus, his disciples, uh, the women that was around him, the community that was around him. Do you think they really understood everything that Jesus was doing at the time? The answer's got to be no. Uh, the reason I know that is because when he was crucified on the cross, they all turned their back and ran away, except for uh, his mother and Mary and John and one or two others. But what they did do is they fell in love with him. That's the goal of this series. They might not have understood everything he did, but there was a reason behind what he did when he did it. And how he did it. And that's what we're going to be talking about on Sunday nights. So it's Sunday night at 6 o'clock. If you want to come over, we watch the uh, the clip, the little series. And then we have a discussion afterwards. It's an open forum to anyone who wants to come and take part. And so we look forward to being there. Of course, we have church on Sunday morning at 10. And Sunday school and, of course, church again at 11. So let's get started. We left off last week in Romans chapter 5. Uh, we'll be actually starting in verse 12. Uh, let's open up in a word of prayer before we get into it. Lord, I thank you that we have the word of God that we can come. We thank you for this means of uh, communication that we can reach out on the internet and we can study the book of Romans and uh, study your word. So Father, we just give you praise, ask you to be with us. And Lord, we just ask you to give us that relationship with you that you intended. So we give you praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. 
Last week, it starts out with the word, therefore. Therefore, since we are justified apart from the law, since we have now been justified through faith, we now have peace with God. And he goes on to tell us that since we've been having, since we are justified, we're going to go through some things in this life. And then he goes on to talk about suffering. And the reason that we're suffering is because it eventually produces the type of character you have and the hope, something that we can be sure that we have. Uh, our sufferings help us uh, produce the character, the perseverance, the hope uh, in our lives. So it's just cool. Um, so now we come back down into verse 12, and there's another therefore. And it says this in verse 12, chapter 5 of Romans. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and that man, of course, we know is Adam, and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. Here's what he's trying to say in a nutshell. We all descended from Adam and Eve way, way back. And because of their sin, because of what they did and became sinners by disobeying the Lord, that gene was passed down from them into all of us. So when you're born, I have the sin of my father living in me. There's nothing I can do about it. It's just a fact. Um, you can't change it. Not on your own anyway. You can't change it by being good enough or keeping the law. And we've been talking about that for the last couple of weeks in the first four chapters of Romans. All sin, for before the law was given, sin was in the world. So even before the law of Moses, before the Ten Commandments, before all of it, uh, sin was in the world. But sin is not taken into account when there is no law. And I love that verse. Because you know what? If there's no law, you can't break the, you can't break the law. There is no law, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, there is no law written down for Christians to keep. The law that God gives us is written on our heart. When you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes and lives and dwells inside of you. And that is the law that we keep. The relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. Even over, the, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of one man, Adam, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Again, the gift of God is not like the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation. But the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. In other words, he's talking about being born again. Some of you may have heard the term being born again. Before Christ came, before you know Christ as personal Lord and Savior, you are, in a sense, condemned because of your sin and your separation with Jesus Christ. But the moment that you accept Jesus Christ, he gives you a new nature, a new spirit, and you are essentially being, have been born again with a new spirit. It's just an awesome thing that he does. Um, it says the gift followed may trespasses and brought justification. It makes us righteous with God. For if by the trespass of the one man, that's Adam, death reigned through that one man, how much more with those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ. It's so cool, that verse. Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, 
So also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as through the disobedience of one man, Adam, were many made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, Jesus, the many will be made righteous. 1 Peter 3.18 says this, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the forgiveness for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. We are also told to die to the flesh. You know, one thing that's made uh, very apparent to me lately, this dying to the old flesh is difficult. And I think that's why it uses the word, the word crucified. In Galatians chapter 5, it says this, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its afflictions, affections, and lusts. Dying to that old self, it talks about being crucified. And I know I'm talking slow here because I want to use my words carefully. Crucifixion was a very slow and painful process for our Lord and Savior when he took our sin upon the cross. And now he asks us, once you belong him to him, he asks us to crucify our old nature. Now stop and think about that. If he wants us to crucify something, it is also a slow and painful process. It's going to hurt, and it's supposed to hurt. Killing something is always painful, especially when it's a slow, torturous death. And to get rid of all the things that you thought you loved, and all the things that are unpleasing to God, you might even have to say goodbye to some people you love very much. Because God doesn't want you hanging around with them anymore because of the influences that they have on your life. You might have people in your life that are going to turn their back on you because you've made a stand and you're following Christ. That's crucifixion. That hurts. It's painful to lose things that you thought you were in love with. But that's what God commands us to do. So, crucify the old flesh. flesh. That's what we're supposed to do. Where did I leave off? Let's go back to verse 19. For just as through the disobedience of one man, that's Adam, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, that's Jesus, the many will be made righteous. The law was added so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That law was added mainly to show us how far apart we are from God. It shows us what we need to be in to live up to God's standards, and I can't do it, and you can't do it either. And so grace, that act of the Lord taking our sin on the cross, there is no sin too great that you can't be forgiven from. There is no sin too great that keeps you from uh, being covered. The sin that you have, there's no sin too great that the Lord can't redeem you from or forgive you from. And all you have to do and all I have to do is ask Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm a sinner. I need you to come into my heart and save me today. Wipe away my sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I accept you into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. And that's pretty much all there is to salvation. We make it more complicated than we have to. Uh, we don't need to do that. Just believe but it's a belief that changes who you are. So that's what I have for today. We'll pick it up next week in chapter 6.
In the meantime, we have some urgent prayer requests that I've got a couple here. I need you to move to the top of your list. Uh, the first one is Marianne Peril. Uh, she is um, in hospice. Uh, she's nearing the end unless the Lord does something else. But uh, the family needs your prayer right now. So I ask you just to stop what you're doing. And say a prayer for Marianne Peril. Um, it looks like she's headed out. Like I say. And I'm not trying to be. I'm just trying to tell you like it is. To pray for her. And pray for the family that's around her. Sweet lady. Uh, Ernie Keller is still in AFib. But I think he's coming home from the hospital today. Uh, Alan Staggs was part of the old church that I was in. He is having his shoulder cemented. And I don't know what I was going through, but he's going through some hard times. And Alan is in Morgantown and needs your prayer. And Donna Staggs, the last I heard, still has a touch of pneumonia and needs your prayer. And then our, our normal ones that we've been praying for with all the uh, cancer going around. Uh, Buddy Dayton, we praise the Lord for what he's doing with that mass in his throat that is gone. But he still needs your prayer. Uh, Dan Beiser, Eileen Beatty. George Tasker, Beth Grayson, and Dana Spicer, who is also nearing the end of her time here on earth. Uh, she's stage four and is on medication to make her comfortable at this time. And uh, she's just a young lady and she needs your prayer. So just pray for Dana Spicer. Put her up on the top of your list with Marianne Peril. Her time is, is short and um, good woman of the Lord. Who understands and she's ready to go home so with that uh, today was a little short and sweet I pray you will come over and visit us Sunday we'd be glad to have you come over and with that let's end up in a word of prayer father God you uh, see the ones here in need father one somehow one way or another you ask us to be conformed to the image of your son Father, that doesn't come without some heartache and without some crucifixion going on in our lives. Things that we need to get rid of. Things that aren't pleasing to you. And it's a painful process that we just talked about in Romans chapter 5. It hurts and we don't want to let go of our old flesh. Father, you are able to change us. And we know there will be suffering. We know there will be persecution. We know there will be people that will turn their back on us. That's okay. Father, just be with us and give us the courage and the strength to turn towards you, to let go of our past, to let go of those memories, and just save us, Lord, and keep conforming us into the image of your Son, Father, as we attempt to keep on crucifying and put to death this old flesh. Lord, we ask you to be with Marianne Peril, Dana Spicer, two people that are, looks like they may be on the way out of here, Father. They both know you, they both know the Lord, and they both love you. So, Father, we lift them up to you right now. We ask you for peace and comfort for the people that's taking care of them right now, for their families who are suffering through this terrible time right now, because we don't want to let go of the people around us. Father, we know you have another plan where they can go to a place where they have a new body that's free from any pain or suffering. A place where you said you will wipe away the tears from their eyes. So we, Father, we know you've already paid for it. And by your stripes, they are already healed. So just be with them. We ask you to be with Dan Bizer as he struggles with the continued chemo treatments. Eileen Beatty, the same way. George Tasker, the same way. Uh, Beth Grayson, as she continues to suffer with her ALS. Lord, continue to use her in a mighty way as she keeps proclaiming the gospel. And we know she will, Lord, until her last breath. So we just praise you for her and her testimony. So, Lord, be with us throughout the rest of this day. We thank you for the beautiful weather you give us on this Wednesday. And we just ask for your continued blessing. For the people in Ukraine, Father, that are going through this horrible time over there, 
Father, may you change the hearts of these evil people in Russia that are tearing them down for no reason, just because they want their land for our leaders as well, Father. Because there's things that we can do to help them if you would just change the hearts and the minds of our leaders here, Father. So we pray for them. We pray for their salvation. We know you love them and you died for them as well, Father. May they see the need to accept you as Savior. The Lord just be with them, we pray. We thank you again for this day in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you people. If I don't see you beforehand, we'll hope to see you Saturday evening at 6 or Sunday morning at 10 and 11 and again Sunday evening at 6. Until then, God bless you and keep enjoying this beautiful weather that the Lord has given us. God bless.